So often, as I said this morning, if you were there, we hear people in the industry refer to their collaborations, and it's often individuals who say, like, you know, I have this great cinematographer. But this session feels a little bit unique because we're going to hear from two people that work together often about it together. So they're both going to tell us about this. Um, and the idea came to me, actually, when Karen, one of our speakers, um, spoke so highly of her editor, Tiffany, and how impactful that relationship had been on, like, her storytelling and how it had made her film so much better. So, bios, because they're also important because we learn new words. Born to Guyanese parents, award-winning filmmaker Karen Chapman. I'll also mention that Karen Chapman is a secret on the internet, so I have to share. <laughs> we'll talk about that after, but, like, you're the least Googleable human. Oh, see, that's a thing. Um, Karen Chapman has screened her work everywhere, from subway displays, hospitals, and airplanes to classrooms, art galleries, and international festivals. A graduate of Emily Carr University in Media Arts, Chapman is an alumna of the Banff Center Film Residency and a Hot Docs Accelerator Fellow. Last year, Chapman was invited to the 2018 Cineplex Entertainment Film Program Director's Lab at the Canadian Film Center and was named one of Playback Magazine's 2018 Five Filmmakers to Watch. Currently, Chapman is preparing to shoot her first narrative feature film, Village Keeper, through the Telefilm Canada's Talent to Watch program. So joining her is editor Tiffany Bowden. Tiffany is a graduate of the Canadian Film Center Editor's Lab and has edited a variety of award-winning shorts, documentaries, and features. Her credits include HBO's Oscar-nominated documentary short Claude Landsman, Spectres of the Shoah, for which she won the CCE Award for Best Documentary, Short Editing, and was nominated for a CSA. Some of her feature credits include Don't Talk to Irene, 2017, which premiered here at TIFF, and Astronaut, um, starring Academy Award-winning actor Richard Dreyfus, She recently wrapped on Barry Average's documentary Prosecuting Evil and the sports documentary Man vs. Machine for TSN. Tiffany lives in Toronto and loves her dog, Coco. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Tiffany and Karen to the stage. That's a really good place to start. There's nothing wrong with saying you love your dog in your bio. It's on. It'll, it'll. Okay. There we go. Okay, welcome. How are we feeling publicly? Nervous. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> a little bit nervous. Okay, no problem. Should we start? Should we warm up a little bit? Okay, what's a movie you really like? Oh, tough question. <laughs> What's the last movie you saw that you liked? How about that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> or a TV show. Okay, last night I watched um, <laughs> Velvet, uh, Jake, yeah. Um, and that was interesting. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to be as understanding trying to be an understanding uh, filmmaker in the sense that um, I think P.T. Anderson was saying um, he was having this conversation with another filmmaker and the filmmaker was just like, oh, that film was terrible, it was awful. And P.T. Anderson was just like, we have to be very careful how you speak and critique other people's films because you want that same kindness to yours. It takes a lot of time and effort and there are a lot of things that people don't see. And it's a perfect storm of things having to go just right in order to do something successful, let alone wonderful. So um, uh, it was not for me. <laughs> Generous, Tiffany. Uh, I saw. I actually, I watched Blind Spotting the other night, and I thought it was pretty good. Okay. I liked it a lot, actually. Great. Okay, so we have a director and an editor. Can you tell us um, some of the qualities you bring to the role you play in filmmaking? Do you want me to? I think like. As an editor, I feel like you definitely have to be pretty like open person. I think that you have to be like patient just because like the work itself can be quite a slog at times. I feel like you definitely have to be like committed and passionate because 
sometimes you're like questioning everything, like, what am I doing, blah, blah, blah. And then I think like, I think it helps to, I feel like also like being like perceptive and like observant about the material and like, yeah, sometimes I feel kind of like, I'm like a sponge just like taking everything in and then like filtering it and I think stuff like that. Yeah, I think it helps to just be like a pleasant person to be around too, which I think I am sometimes. She is. <laughs> and you? Um, I'm not sure. I think because there are things that I've been taught what a director is and who a director looks like, I think I'm constantly trying to um, reevaluate that what that is for me. And so um, I think my job is to protect the story um, from the nucleus of the thing to the for it coming to fruition. So I think I would I would say like I'm a steward of the story. Um, and I, I would say I have to be a manager in some sense. Um, I think you do need to be very observant, very perceptive. Um, and I think it's important to be fair, but not overly polite. Such a great distinction. Protector of the story. I hope we come back to that. I hope I remember that because that'll come into how you work together. So um, how did you, did you, did you always know the role you would play in filmmaking or storytelling? And if not, how did you come to it? This might be true um, for both of you. I came to film. I mean, I always knew that I wanted to tell stories. Um, uh, I initially wanted to be a puppeteer because I love puppets a lot. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Um, um, but I started to apply for roles and I was just learning that the roles that I was uh, being offered in terms of, or that I was auditioning for was someone that I, I didn't recognize and I didn't feel like I needed to pre perpetuate that. And um, I started making things when I was like, you, some of your like 16, I started making films. Yeah. I, uh, for me, it was kind of like random because I grew up in Ottawa and there and I just like took this like youth internship thing at the video co-op there and just started like volunteering like this was in the day when they had like avid rental suites and you would need like a volunteer avid technician person if you were making your video through the video co-ops and that's just kind of how I started so it was just kind of like random and like I guess I liked it and was kind of good at it or something yeah wow random <laughs> random editing i like i thought you were gonna say like i grew up in ottawa and there's no movies there or something it's like what does that mean for ottawa um okay and am i right to presume as is the purpose of this talk that you work together often yes i try to I try to only work yet <laughs> right and how did you guys meet um so well you you do the story right now do you how you how i remember it well it was kind of also random like I met the the producer of your short was I just randomly met her at the NFB and you guys had were maybe going to get one editor to edit it and then that fell through and then she was like we're looking for an editor and then then I don't remember did we talk on the phone one day or something barely it was like so what happened what had happened was like the editor that we had um dropped out out of the sky just like that drop boom and we had to figure out like what we were going to do very quickly because uh, we had all this footage that needs still needs to be like logged um and my my producer was just like yeah you should try this person and then i turned around and there weren't a lot of other people there at all that were putting up their hand and saying that they wanted to work with me and so i had to just be like okay and, and then we met remember we met the the train station and you were like getting on a train and i was giving my like entire in, in my mind like my heart and soul to a perfect stranger getting on a bus leaving toronto and i i gave you the hard drive you remember that no i don't remember <laughs> that that, <laughs> that happened yeah that's when we first met i gave you Whoa. my hard drives that's intense it was <laughs> So when you first, your first project, when you first met, you hadn't, like, established a relationship? Nothing. Okay, what happened after that? Lots of things. Whoa, so much happened. <laughs> I feel like... On that project. That project... 
is a short was a short documentary and the subject matter was about <clears throat> a woman who lost all three of her children in separate instances of gun violence in Toronto so like subject matter itself was like really heavy and like I feel like we both felt like this like really intense responsibility to like tell her story with like respect and stuff do you think Karen definitely that's why yeah <laughs> the hard drives was so scary that day but I just some you just I just jumped I didn't have an option so and then like feel like I don't know it's just I don't know I think I'll cry if I talk about it actually <laughs> I can't talk about it I don't know a lot of stuff happened I guess yeah, the, the timing um the timing of it Okay. Um, so, uh, you also don't have to talk about more yeah. of it than you're comfortable talking about. What, I would just say, like, Karen's a really good person. Uh, and I, I don't know, I feel like after that experience, I feel like I was, like, bound to you for life or something. Oh, like, I don't know, you're just, like, so, like, generous. Like, wow. I don't know. <laughs> See what I'm <laughs> Uh, I don't know I just anyways I feel like I'm like being all mysterious or something but like <laughs> I guess the project like brought up a lot of stuff in like Karen's personal life and then like stuff happened in my personal life during the process and I just felt like you were so like I don't know the, I can't even say it properly but you're just like so kind and generous to me during that that it's like I don't know it's just like really intense <laughs> I don't know. You're, Karen's such a good person. Right? Oh, well, I'm right here. Like, <laughs> oh. You're still in the room. I'm just dead. letting you guys yes. know. Uh, um, to to that, I, w I would say um, because the nature of the film was was one that we had to approach with like full honesty. There was n there was a very fine line between what's happening in our personal lives and the film. It was all very organic. It was all very live, and um, and it. I just, I think we both put, we were in a position in our lives to be transformed by the film and by the, our undertaking. And I think that that happened and it was, it was, um, I'm grateful for it. So without getting into more than you feel comfortable getting into, because truly you don't need to, um, working on a vulnerable project at a vulnerable time obviously could bring people together. What was specific to your relationship that allowed that to work in ways that were, productive creatively or that brought you closer versus like alienating like you you say you handed off these hard drives it was scary then do you remember the moment where you're like oh we can communicate about this we can do this work together and like can you tell us a bit what that felt like or what what happened I don't think it was a particular day but I think it was a particular pro like a lot of it is like slogging like just like, like walking through weeds and you're not quite sure what you think you see um and then I just uh, uh I, I do remember one moment. Um, I think I was told that the, the executive producers told me to do a paper edit. And I had never done one before. I would like, you know, you do things on your own. You don't exactly do them to industry standard. You just do them to get them done. And so what I did, I printed out every single frame of the film. And then I like wrote, literally wrote every single thing that, that happened and the action. And I cut it up and put it all on the ground and move things around and then you didn't think I was crazy. Right. Yeah. I appreciated that. I was like, you, you were like, you go ahead and do that. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do that. And I think, I, I yeah. think that helped, that helped us though. Didn't totally. It? Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. That yeah. was, yeah, that was important. Cause I mean, a part of it is like the mechanics of a story. And sometimes when like you're the director and you're not the editor, you don't have all of those, that footage in front of you. You don't have, you don't remember everything the way that it happened. You remember what happened, but you don't remember what you have. And so for me, it was an important part um, to, to kind of be really tactile with the, the, the story and move things around and kind of get the feedback and just push it further than where it would have gone if I would just would have handed off and walk out of a room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was also like, I feel like we went to like different places when we were editing that and we were just like trying so hard to like, 
we were, I feel like we took a long time because we were like trying to get it right because it was just like so like heavy and intense and we just wanted to like do justice to her story and like we felt such responsibility that we're like what about this and we like tr yes. really tried every route that we could yes absolutely so building that trust because you both valued that story had you worked with a previous editor before um i have um and it was not like this, right? <laughs> and I, I, I never knew love. <laughs> no, but you, you, I mean, people, I find that like people who collaborate with folks and they have that um, camaraderie, the shorthand, that's gold. Like it's a really hard thing to find. And before, like in any capacity of filmmaking, I've always done things on my own, not necessarily because I wanted to, but because there's no one else. And so um, I think working with you, it was the first time that I felt like I had a partner. Like I felt that it, the story wasn't just my, my own kind of burden to bear, you know? Um, and just someone that I can just get deeply inside of the thing with. Uh, it's such a lonely process to make a th make a thing, um, and I, and sometimes you're not always right, and sometimes you are. And I just just the, just having another person to talk to, I think, was um, it yeah it definitely transformed, for me. And Tiffany, had you worked with other directors before? Y yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like. Yeah, I guess there's just, like, there's so many, like, different levels of, like, connecting with who you're working with. And, like, all of them are kind of, like, important, you know? But I feel like we definitely, like, we definitely connected on, like, all of the levels or whatever. <laughs> so the message is connect on all of the levels. No, I'm believing I mean, the you point. don't have to connect on all the levels. But, like, then, you know, a lot of times I'll, like be close friends with the people that I work with. Karen, Afterwards. <laughs> putting on some hand cream. <laughs> it is winter. I'm belaboring the point because I feel like these specifics are like easy when you're in them in the in a good way, but even something like taking care of a story that's given to you as an editor, do you feel like that's an assumption all editors make? Like when something gets handed to you by a director, is the assumption like, I will handle this with care because this matters? Or is it like, give me my work and let me go do it? feel it seems to me as though like most editors are like pretty like thoughtful sensitive people who like deaf like I I guess like I feel like I just like put so much of myself into like whatever I'm working on even if it's not like the most thing that I feel passionate about but I do feel like a lot of editors are similar in that way like I think they want to be there and trust trusted with the material whether it's really intense or not yeah i just yeah. feel like it's your work so you're like it's important to you like you know what i mean yeah. i think most editors are like that yeah. they know. are not they're not <laughs> oh okay they're not. i don't know <laughs> it's great to to you know but they're not and i think that's what was great about working with you thanks <laughs> Um, okay, so we've talked a little bit about some of the things that felt in sync. You trusted each other. You weren't shut down when you cut up your film with paper, and Tiffany supported you in that process. Was there anything else, like, from that beginning that you could name specifically for our audience so that they're on the lookout for these collaborations that feel good, that really felt in sync, either on this project or other ones? Well, I feel like if you're, like, going to work with someone, like, I feel like the director and editor, like, in a way are t the two people that are like closest to the film in certain ways because they just spend like so much time with it and you spend like so much time with the other person. So I feel like there's like some fundamental things like you should be on some sort of the same page about the film. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you don't have to have, like your ideas should complement each other, but you need to like be speaking the same language about the project in order, like that's a fundamental thing. And then it's like, just like to get along with the person, if you're spending so much time with them, that's another kind of like, I think it's like pretty important. And then it's like the, if you're like creative chemistry and that you might not necessarily know. I feel like when I first, when you first meet someone, you kind of can like really get a sense if it's gonna like work out or not, you know? 
but like maybe the creative chemistry if that's like flowing i feel yeah i feel like you can get a sense of that too so there's like feel like yeah there's like different layers of so i it just and it 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 like slapped me in the face and i what i realized is that um when you're trying to like make a film it's kind of like moving a mountain like you're disrupting the regular order of life just to do this you're trying to convince a whole bunch of people to do what you want to do um and in that convincing, there are people who will tell you no, and there are people who tell you yes. And it like very quickly, you know, like who those people are uh, very quickly. You'll, you'll, um, for whatever reason the no is, but I just, the way that I like to create and the way that I I'm finding that's most effective for me or being around people who say yes, I don't know how, but not no, you know what I'm saying? And so you're, you say yes. And I, I would, I would say, Hey, maybe we should try this. And your response wasn't, uh, or I don't have time or why, but it was just like, okay. Okay. And then in that, I think somehow we we just flowed a little bit right. like better. It's like, I, I wasn't, um, I was willing to see what you were going to do. Yeah. I'm totally open to that. And I think you were totally open to seeing what I was going to do too. And there's, there's like a magic that happens in the kind of like molecules just like smacking each other. Some things, things happen that um, like that one scene from Walk Good where Carol was just speaking and like this, like a bulldozer comes and just, it was just, it was your, something, it was like, maybe we should try this. And it just, it didn't, it wouldn't have, a bulldozer in the middle of a film about trauma. Like it just, and that's a, that's um, a bulldozer going through Regent Park. Like you wouldn't necessarily see how that would correlate, mm -hmm. but the feeling what what does it feel like right and so great things happen i think when you say yes and you're willing to try things the other thing i'll say is that um normally how i like in the past how i've come across collaborators is by watching other films that i really like and and just sculpting basically going to the credits and seeing exactly who they were and people are most people are findable and finding who those folks were and just reach out the worst someone's going to do is tell you no. And frankly, you're going to hear no a lot. So there's nothing wrong with just trying. And you'd be surprised. A lot of people say yes. And if you have a, like a cool enough idea and they believe in you, maybe they say, hey, maybe they say yes, you know. So I think to get into to the meat of it, we're going to watch this film. Do you want to say anything before we watch it? No. Oh, no, nothing at all. I'm wondering if you can tell us specifically like two to three moments that changed based on what was happening in the edit room, in the edit suite. Decisions that got made, new directions, things you experimented with that brought us to this final point. I feel like the concept and like approach was like pretty clear beforehand. And like none of that really changed during the process mm -hmm. I feel like it was ooh, well, I, don't... I think because <laughs> I think because we just worked on the last project together um from jump Tiffany was just like we should do what I did with the pictures remember how I told you I printed every single frame in the beginning so before we even started we did that so what we so what I did is from the um the pre-interview I used that to kind of figure out what the film was going to be. And so we had, we had a very, we had like a paper edit as if the film has already been done, as if it already been edited. And we used that to kind of, what do we need to tell the story? What are the type of questions? What, what has to be said? What are we seeing? And then um, we kind of narrowed it down and focused it, but it's very similar to the paper edit actually, because we, we just realized how much time we wasted in the last film. And, it took a long time to become very clear, but once we were clear, like it was it. So you were engaging with Tiffany before you had even shot, and is that common? No, <laughs> I don't. I don't think it is, but it's I think how it's we were helpful to me with your director before you start. Oh yeah, for sure. Like even just I don't know, just to like get on the same page and like. You know, it, it. You may have a helpful idea before they they shoot. You might not, but it's helpful just to like get in the zone. You know, chat through your script or whatever the plan is. Yeah, 
Have dir- have filmmakers in the audience met with their editors before they started shooting? Yeah. Did it have produce good results? <laughs> Oh. Yes, in the back. Oh, good lord! <laughs> Great. Okay, good. So, what else happened in the edit of this piece? Oh man, it feels like I feel like I think. Okay, so just the uh, this project was commissioned by Hot Docs, and they were doing a project to commemorate Canada Canada's one fiftieth, and they asked five filmmakers across Canada to talk about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I don't know if you guys have read that recently, but it is stale. It is not. <laughs> it is so it's 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 very um, it's a legal document that has teeth. It's not like the um, like the Constitution that's very flavorful and poetic. No, it's it's a legal document. Right. And so because it's so dry, how do you like how was I going to make a film about that? But I knew I wanted to talk about carding and the effects that it was having on on black people here in 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 Toronto, but a, in, like all over the country, um, and so we talked about that. We talked about. I know this is about carding. It just it took a long time for us to be this specific in terms of finding a lawyer um, that could get us to this place. But it was all very collaborative before we even started shooting. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I feel like your concept and everything was like really strong, and the story was strong. So it's more just like figuring out which Same. visuals go where and what exactly, like what is ex- like the arc of what he's saying, and like there was a lot of like little things we had to kind of figure out because I feel like your idea was like really strong, like the way you shot it and everything. So it was more just like figuring out like the nitty gritty. Should he curse? Yeah. 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 We were trying to decide like this, this one, the one line where he's like, so should my, so should my kid like, like hang, like just not wear baggy clothes, not want, not, not play basketball. And the, the line was actually fuck no. <laughs> but we, we took out the fuck um, because I think, and that was that took us days to decide whether we were going to do that. <laughs> I was like, it took days, but but we we realized that it was the the right. And I I stand by that call. Well, yeah, I think it works like that. Both work. I don't know. But I like didn't, <laughs> I lost sleep over that like one decision. But I'm glad that. I feel like we're witnessing the edit suite a little <laughs> bit. I like it. Um, having watched that, do we have any questions for either of them about the edit or the final picture that we saw? Things that you noticed that you're like, did I notice that? Yeah. Drone. <laughs> so when in doubt. Drone. Something a good thing about like your budget getting a little bigger is like more money to to like have toys. We had a drone which was really cool to shoot with, um, and we had a car mount as well that was like it made my year. Just like being on being like on roads with like a car and a follow car. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, and I feel like it fits with the story too. It's not just like throwing a drone shot. No, yeah. that was that was that was very purposeful. We were trying to remember and again, this is something else that I think I learned from What Good is like what are we seeing and how can what we see um tell the story but without being too literal. And so the idea like I got the idea from a South African artist and I'm forgetting his name and I'm sorry about that, but he was looking at the villages um in uh in his in his town and he was seeing how wealth is divided from up here and so you see all these shanty towns and then you see these little houses that are very perfectly and neatly maintained and i was like that's kind of like how toronto is and how wealth is spread out and we look at look at something like race and and institutionalized racism what does that look like right that people work in those buildings but that looks like city hall john and mcdonald it looks like the court it looks like so the idea is like how we're in the car, we're driving. That's what, it, in, the, in the end, we'll have a father talk to his son for the first time about racism and about how to protect yourself in a police interaction. And that was actually the first time that, that the lawyer was speaking to Deshaun. That was the first time. Um, so that was a layer. But then what do we see, right? What, um, yeah, there were a lot of visual layers that we were very purposeful in, in, in adding. Totally. <laughs> Anything else we noticed that you have a question about? Yeah, in the second row. It's okay. It's 
crazy how people actually got that, but that was like on purpose. <laughs> yeah, you always I'm just going to repeat it though because I said no mic and then I realized you can't hear in the back so when they switch seats in the driver's seat it's like he's saying I've taken you as far as I can now it's like your turn to drive like it's your vehicle so the question is was that intentional yes. <laughs> easy but that, that, that's also very um, I think a, a, like no frame should be a b-roll you know what I mean? Just like no frame should just be in it because you need to fill up the space. I feel like that was kind of the challenge with this one. Like, you, sh yeah, you, yeah. Just yeah. to like make it seem like, yo, now we need to just no. cover this with B roll or whatever. Like, I hope, man, yeah. Everything has to count. Every inch is your responsibility. And I felt that. And so every frame had a purpose. Awesome. We have one more question. I will use the mic. I feel really bad. Hello. So I just wanted to know the intention behind the stylistic choice of never really seeing the father's face until a very specific moment and having seen the son's face in the car even first and having those shots of his hand over like the chair when he's like, you know, changing seats and those little moments where the father's voice is essentially like the essence of the film. You were trying to make it very um, specific, insular and small. And so the idea is that you're in the car and you, you're, you're kind of witnessing this thing happen and so um yeah it was it was intentional and I, I think it was even intentional to favor the son a little bit more and so you're seeing him a little bit more because for me the film is about him his father may be speaking it but he will live it and so that's where yeah. awesome great we're gonna open up oh was there yeah there's a mic coming for you What impact were you hoping this film had on people? And um, what impact did it have on you? Well, that's a good question. Um, I have a four-year-old, and so that was my the biggest kind of thing on my mind, is like, how am I going to explain these crazy things to a child when I don't even understand them? But that's a, something that like Black parents have to go through all of the time, and I feel like... Um, uh, it's it's just this this question this how how am I going to explain this how do I protect this child from a world that perhaps may be unkind um, and so that was at the forefront and that I the fear I used it as a driving point in terms of making sure that the film got made and the intention was we live in a city where um, I don't know if ev if everyone got that that alert last night about that little girl no. gutted. Um, but we live in a city where sometimes bad news stays in one area and it doesn't leave that area. And you could be like, I remember by the time I left high school, I knew three people that were shot and, and, but I could turn to like, like an Asian friend or a white friend that'd be like, what are you talking about? It's just, it, it was this crazy thing where how trauma felt like it was only in my corner. And I wanted to take it out of my own corner and put it in everyone else's backyard because that's the world that I, kind of live in it's not my problem it is ours and so that was the intention behind it that's good i'm gonna yeah you can clap to that this happened in the in the other session as well everyone gets into these like beautiful meaty things and then i feel callous going back to like a technical question but i'm gonna ask two more technical questions then we're gonna open it back up um my question is around you talked a lot about your love, which is beautiful, and the theme of this session. Can you tell us in this relationship or others when things break down and what happens? Because it's so important how we manage conflict, especially in these. And I'm thinking about sensitive stories and that like stories that like really matter. And then you have a breakdown and it could be communication or whatever and how you work through it. Um, feel like. Sometimes conflict arises and I don't know, I feel like I can think of like a project that I worked on recently and this was like not really like that 
intense or whatever, but I was just like, oh, we should cut these scenes. And the director was like, no. And like, I feel like actually 98% of the time through like just chatting and like seeing the other person's perspective and stuff, you can kind of figure things out. But this was like such a stalemate. And then in those times, I'm just like, the director is the person that's going to have to answer for this work, not me. Their stakes are like so much higher. You you know what I mean? So I'm just like, oh, that, you know, it's, then we'll do it your way. That's fine. You know what I mean? But I feel like I don't, I feel like also like when you're working so intensely with someone, sometimes you might, I, we never got into a fight, no, but sometimes never. things get a little like hairy or whatever, but that's just like the nature of like, working so closely with someone and obviously you like both want what's best for the film and you're that's both not always true and that's that's not oh. always that's not something that's always Are you gonna fire right now? Yeah. we're good <laughs> no, we're, we're good yeah well okay from my experience most people both want what's right for the film and if you're so like passionate about it and so into it and sometimes when you're working like really long hours you like get into this weird headspace and thing tempers might flare a little bit, but usually that's with people that I feel like really close with. And then it kind of just like a moment later, you're just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean? But it's just in terms of like conflict about the project, most times I would say things can kind of work. Like one person will be like, oh, I see it your way, actually, blah, blah, blah. And maybe you can like, there's a point from which to move forward. But if it's like a true stalemate, then I'm always just like this. Th I'm not going to have to answer for this. This person, like their stakes are way higher. So like I'm fine with going your way, you know? <sighs> I do not have you that must experience. Answer for your work. Well, I. OK. Um, how to be as diplomatic as possible. OK, so I think being a I just have to be honest, being a, a black filmmaker, black being a black uh, filmmaker who does not look 36, who's five foot nothing. Um, it's a challenge. I get undermined left, right and center. Um, and so I try to circumvent that as much as possible, whereas like if I'm particularly if I'm bringing collaborators into a community that may not be of their own. I, I sit them down and explain to people that they need to have the utmost respect. And if that's a problem, then perhaps they should find another project. Um, I've Something actually a friend of mine told me um, uh, is that if there's a problem that happens on set and it's like a snarky comment or something inappropriate or something that's disrespectful, the right thing to do is to call it out right there and do it loudly so everybody can hear. So it's not, you don't take the person aside, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like that you can protect their ego and you, you address it loudly as possible, gather as many people around, I think, to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, and I, a part of me was very like resistant to that, um, but I just remembered I am like, it's how I was raised as a Caribbean person to be, you don't go around, you go through, but just with all transparency for the good of the things, you have to call things out all day long and it's tiring. Um, and sometimes I don't want to explain myself, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is not, things are not equal. Things are not equal. And so the way, man the way that the way that people will come at me they would never come to like a white man with like a baseball cap on right and so I, I just feel like sometimes um and I think Beyonce said it she's like I'm not trying to be Beyonce said it she said like, I'm not she's like I'm not trying to be overly polite I want to be fair this is business right and in order to keep things like you know filmmaking they even base it on military time still like it, there's a way to do things to be efficient and sometimes people need to lose their jobs and that's just you get cut <laughs> yes thank you karen
Okay, now I'm going to turn it back. We have like 10 minutes and we're already over time for the day. So thank you all for sitting in your seats. Do we have more questions for these two about? Yeah, I see in the middle row, if we can just give a mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask what the uh, writing process was for the narration. That was really cool. So um, because he's such a already a great speaker and a lawyer, he's used to the, the like, Oracle, he's used to speaking, he's a lawyer, he used to be getting in court and saying these things. And so what we did, we trans, we did a, a pre-interview and we wrote everything out. And then we kind of cut and pasted that together, his own words. And then we asked him to read it again in a car, totally cheated. And so it sounded like he's in the car, but we actually did it properly with the sound recorder. It was actually like a clown car. Cause there was like, a, the, the sound guy was like six foot tall. The camera person was in there and I was in there. So it was five people in a, in a very, very small car. So we had to cheat. Thank you. We have another question. Yeah, in the middle again. Yeah. There's a mic coming for you. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, so I just, um, I thought like the title, like uh, Lessons in Justice was really profound. And I was just wondering how you kind of came up with that and came to that point. <laughs> you know when you, like, you think of something you're just like damn I'm so smart but <laughs> kind of that's kind of that's kind of yeah that's kind of how I was just like spitting things out and just researching we talked about it for a long time and it was actually called something not not that I don't remember but it was bad I don't remember either yeah but it's just we said it a few times um and then it just stuck. It just was the thing. It just, it just, these happy, happy accidents happen that make you feel smart, but it's really just, you know, chance and timing and good luck. It is a great title. Other people, questions? Yeah, right here. Mm. I'm going to repeat the question. What was the first image that you had in mind when making this film? And maybe you can both answer that. I think we had, we had themes, right? We had, sorry, we had themes. We had like um, the institution. We had them in the car. We had shots of just on the boy. We had shots of the city. We had shots of... Uh, you know, just just life and and around like around like the familial sense. Um, and so I don't remember, and I, I'm sure there was. I'm sure I intended on having a first shot, but sometimes like when things work out, you don't even remember what the original thing was. You just kind of you, you understand you got to flow to what it is. I think. Still don't remember. You're fine. I don't remember. <laughs> That's okay. Um. Before we finish, can you both give a piece of advice? We've been ending sessions with some advice for finding collaborations that are loving and caring. Or just anything, really. I th for that's it, but I think more specific is better. Like, I okay. think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that, like, I don't know if I was always like this. Maybe it does come after time, but I feel like I just kind of like know when I meet with someone, whether it's gonna like, I have a, like kind of like an instinct about it, about like where the collab, or, like how the collaboration will kind of work and like what kind of person they are. But I feel like, yeah. So that's not really advice. Um, well, meet with people. Yeah. Listen to your instinct. Yes, I definitely meet with a lot of people for sure. You talk, you answer, and then I'll think of something else. I would say, say um, if you like films, if uh, you have to study them, and then if you like like sound or like the compose or the composing or like the shots, um, be precocious. Just ask people. Just go out. Like, what's the worst someone can tell you? No. Um, I would say apply for grants. Um, under learn what that is because Canada is very unique in that we actually have a structure for artists to make their work. It's not easy and it's very competitive, but it's worth a try. And at least you're working towards your goal. Um, I would say know what the uh, the like on the industry wise is like know what CBC is. Know what the type of streams that they offer. Know what they're making. Like CBC has a doc stream. They've got a com. They've got all these streams. Um, Netflix is coming in heavy like just know what what is out there in terms of where you could possibly be making your work um, 
Uh, TIFF also has a really cool industry conference where you can come and learn more about films. You don't have to go to film school to, to make films. Um, I would say, I would say, especially like women filmmakers and filmmakers of color, when you're, you're cradling a story that's very specific to you or you're coming from, um, you're right. And you, you'll get, uh, people undermine you left, right and center. Um, sometimes it's not on purpose. Sometimes it is. And you just have to kind of keep the nucleus of the thing, protect it because only you can steward the story all the way through, but at the same time collaborate because you're not always right. Right. And, and just be, be around people who, um, who say yes, as opposed to no, because they just make life so much easier. Did you want to add anything? I don't know. I feel like you just said so many good things. I'm going <laughs> to wreck it by saying something weird. It's a beautiful editor complimenting her director. <laughs> Please join me in thanking Tiffany and Karen for sharing some of their process with us.